Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. <laughs> We're almost there, huh? <laughs> to the break. Looking forward to it. Okay, so last time, last time we were talking about uh, money, I think, uh, specifically. We had talked about the compound interest formula. And that formula was uh, that the model was A is P multiplied by 1 plus R over N to NT. And uh, we considered the we considered the, the special case of well what if the it was a thought experiment. What if we have that the principal deposit is one, the interest rate is 100% and the number of years is 1 uh, so that that whole expression becomes this 1 plus uh, 1 over n to exponent n making most of those uh, making making p r and t all equal to 1 and then we let n uh, become as big as we want and we notice that when when we started making n very very big then this converged to a number and what what name did we give that number E, right? The, the natural number. Okay, and then con con conceptually, uh, what you, you, can, you can think of E uh, like uh, the, the, the number of dollars. So, <laughs> uh, E is the number, the, the maximum number of dollars you could get out of an account if. Uh, you, 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 could, you could deposit one dollar at an interest rate of a hundred percent over one year and you could choose as many compoundings as you want. Okay, so as a result we now have a new model. This is called the, uh, this is called the continuous compounding model. So, in, so, so there's two different models. Here they are. Uh, the discrete compounding model, which is that one. A is P multiplied by 1 plus R over N to NT. And now we have the continuous compounding model. And now the formula is A is P multiplied by the exponential of RT. For reasons that I suspect will be obvious. Uh, this one is frequently referred to as the PERT formula. <laughs> okay. Well, so uh, let, let's, let's have an example of doing this. Uh, suppose, that, suppose that you have an account. So given uh, an account with uh, continuously compounding annual interest rate interest rate uh, I don't know 7.1% Uh, an initial deposit so and initial deposit one three one four dollars find the account balance after ten years Okay, so now uh, we have we have three interest models. We have the simple interest model, 
uh, the discrete compounding model and the continuous compounding model. So which model are we supposed to use? The continuous one. Okay, good. What is, what is your hint that that should be the case? <laughs> well, probably the phrase continuously compounding, right? So that, that's kind of a, a giveaway. Uh, however, I, I, I feel obligated to, to say that because um, every year that I teach college algebra, I see students try to use uh, this one in a, in a problem that, to me anyway, plainly states conti continuously compounding. Right, so then uh, if, if it said, if the problem said compounded quarterly, then what would that mean? Discrete. It would mean the discrete one, and furthermore, it would mean that n is what? Four, right? If, if, supposing it said that. Okay, so we're going to use this model. Uh, how many parameters are in this model? Neither one of these, neither three nor five. Four. four. <laughs> now, why four? Because there four thingies. Four thingies. <laughs> okay, so now, for those of you that, that said five, I, su I suspect that you counted one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but E doesn't count. Why does E not count? Be because it's a constant. It's a constant. Okay, so then E doesn't take on, doesn't change in between different problems. E is a constant. Okay, so there's just one, two, three, four variables. So this is a four, uh, uh, a, f a four parameter model. So to solve this exercise, I must have given you how many of them? Three, and I must be asking for the other one. Okay, so let's run, let's run through them all and make sure that we know uh, what we know and what we're trying to find. So P, uh, are we to find this or were we given this? We were given this. What's its value? Good. Uh, R, are we to find this or were we given it? Okay. What's its value? Very good. 0 0.071. In yeah, there's no in in this model, right? <laughs> this is the continuous model. Okay, so it's not in here. Okay, how about uh, t? Ten, because it says ten years, uh, and then uh, a. That's what we're supposed to find. And what part of the story says that that's what we're supposed to find? The account balance. Yeah, it says find the account balance. Okay. As a result, we can plug all of this in. A is equal to 1314 multiplied by the exponential of 0 0.071 multiplied by 10. Okay, so we type that into the calculator. And I get that A is two six seven two. Point six six, and to 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 get my calculator to do that, I had to type. Uh, did I do it right? Yeah. To get my calculator to do that, I had to type one three one four, multiply, and then I had to make this show up. E caret this, and to get to get that bit to show up. To get this bit to show up, I had to hit the second button, the, the little blue button right there, and then uh, I had to hit the LN button, that button right there. So second LN, and then once I got that to show up, then uh, I typed 0 
zero seven one multiply ten. That's what I had to type in my calculator. Any question about that? Okay. So again, uh, if you brought a calculator, I strongly encourage you to try to do this. Uh, and if you didn't, then you really need to do this, this one and a few exercises over the break uh, because it would be profoundly unwise to walk into the last quiz and the final exam and that be the first situation in which you're trying to get your calculator to do this. Okay, please don't do that. Uh, good, any question about this? Any questions about it? Okay. So, um, well, exponential functions are, are functions just like any others, and all that talk that we made about uh, transforming functions, this still applies to exponential functions. So uh, consider, for example, this one, f of x is uh, 2 uh, to exponent, say, x. Um, minus 3. So specifically, I want you to imagine, I want you to, to consider this function uh, in the following kind of way, that we took, we took sort of the y is uh, 2 to x that you know and love, and then what did we do with the x? Yeah, we replaced it with x minus 3. And my question to you, so notice the transformation was that x became x minus 3. If you were to look at the plot, uh, if you were to perform this transformation and looking at the plot, what would occur to the plot? Not a reflection, a shift. Which way? To the right. So the plot would move right 3. Alternatively, you could, you could consider the plot to be stationary and then the coordinate system, the axes behind it, are moving to the left three. So let's, let's, uh, let's plot this as a result. Okay, so the, the strategy I'm going to take is I'm going to actually plot this one because this, because uh, I'm going to plot this one first. I'm just going to put little dots for this one. So uh, what if x is 0? Then what is, uh, what is y? What is 2 to 0? 1. Okay, so that'd be that point right there. And then, because this is an exponential, every time you move to the right, you multiply by the base. What is the base here? 2. So th currently, the output is 1. And what's twice that? 2, right? So then, to move to the right, 1 makes the output become 2. So now the output is 2. What's twice that? 4, right? So if I move to the right, 1, the new output is 4. And then moving to the right one more, the new output is 8. OK. So moving to the right doubles the output. What does moving to the left do? Halves the output. So this would be half, and then a fourth, and then an eighth. And that's probably the best I can do. I can't make them any closer because the pencil's only so small. OK. That's this one. So how do, we t how do we plot the actual one that we were trying to do? Every, every point needs to move to the right three units. OK, so that's how I'll do it. I'll just move this one to the right, three units, to the right, 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 to the right. 
So, <clears throat> the actual plot that we wanted was this one. Okay, any questions about this one? <clears throat> Questions about it? I see some skeptical glances. I moved six over. Ah, well, I'm counting. I'm counting this as this as one. Oh, okay. Not one. Not not that is one, but that is one. Other questions, concerns? Okay, let's try another one. So, um, no, not notably, um, it, we we classified uh, exponentials as either growth or decay. And what is what kind is this one? Growth. Okay, because as you move to the right, you go up. Okay. So, how about? this one. How about h of x is, so first I'm going to write half x. I'm going to write some more, but first I'm going to ask about this. So what's the base for this one? Half. Okay, good. Would this one be growth or decay? Decay. decay. So as we go to the right, as we go to the right, um, it's, it's going to, th this, it, uh, output is going to go to zero. So now I'm going to uh, do this. I'll say minus four. So before I wrote the minus four, you probably had a pretty good idea of what it looked like. So my question is, is what, what is the effect uh, the, on the plot of subtracting, of, of, of doing that subtract four? It is going to be a shift. And how is it going to shift? It's going to be down four. So let's see why. Consider. So if we have y is half to x, y is half to x, then what we did was we did y is, y is half to x, and then we subtracted 4. Now the question is, is which, which variable is this 4 playing with? Is it playing with the x's or the y's? It's playing with the y's uh, because it's not up there in the exponent with the x. So let's move it to be over with the y's so that we can more clearly see what it's doing. So what, what it's doing uh, is it's pushing the coordinate system, the axes, up 4. Alternatively, instead of thinking that the coordinate system is moving, the plot, you could say, is moving down four. In the same sense, in the same sense that if, if, if you know, I was somehow magical and I could hold all of us fixed and I, I lifted the whole building up, that would, that would be the same as us going down. It would be exactly the same. Okay, uh, good. So, so a, a, as a result of this, the result that you'll see is that the plot goes down Okay, so then let's let's plot this. Okay, so the way uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take the same strategy as before. I'm going to plot uh, this one, and then I'm going to take all those points and shift them down four units. Okay. So I'm going to plot this one because this one's a little simpler. So for this one, supposing I plug in x is 0, what's the output? 1, right? So what's half to 0? It's 1. Now the way exponentials work is every time you move one unit to the right, you multiply by the base. You multiply the output by the base. So the output is presently 1. So if I move to the right, what will the output be? 
half. And then half of that, and then half of that, and that's about as good as I can do. So uh, uh, if I move to the left, what will happen to the output? It, it'll multiply by two. Specifically, you, you could think of it like, well, we'll divide it by half. But dividing by half is the same as multiplying by 2. So uh, 2, and then 4, and then uh, 8. Okay, so, so these are the un, unshifted ones. So, the, so, so the, the shifted ones, those are the ones that we actually wanted. So what do we need to do to get the, the plot that we were actually looking for? Yeah, all of these need to go down 4. Okay, so notably, these ones right here, as, as x starts going to the right, notice that these outputs, these outputs uh, will go to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the, this axis and I'm going to draw it uh, four units down. So right here. Because uh, that'll help me uh, make sure make sure that I do this this process correctly. So this one is at that high, and then that high, and that high, and then that high, and this one is then that high, that high, blah, blah, blah. that high. Maybe I can get even one more. Not really. It'd be way up here. <coughs> that. <laughs> so. is what we wanted to plot. Okay, very interesting. So for this for this function uh, that, that we're calling h of x, I have a question. So as x goes to negative infinity, what does h of x do? Goes to positive infinity. That is to say, as you go to the left on the plot, you go up. Okay, and similarly, as you go to the right, as x goes to positive infinity, positive infinity, what does h of x do? It goes to negative 4. Uh, it goes to negative 4. You can think of it like uh, h, h has two terms. It has this term and, and also the negative 4. Uh, and this half to x, it's going to, it's going to go to 0 in the same way, in the same kind of way that a, a, a mass of radioactive elements eventually uh, decays away. Okay, good. Any question about this one? Okay. One last example. <coughs> okay. For example, uh, suppose uh, suppose an, an exponential function passes through the points 0, 6, and 3, 750. Going up quick, huh? Uh, find its formula. Okay, well, for, 
for uh, for an exponential function that has this form, so suppose it looked like this, b to x. Uh, if you plugged in zero, what should you get? If you plugged in zero for x, what should you get? Should get one. So uh, it couldn't it couldn't be like this. So the exponent because what it, what output are you supposed to get if you plug in zero for this function? Six. Okay, so it must, it must actually be of this form. f of x is a multiplied by b of x. So what we have to do is figure out, uh, we need to determine, so need to determine the values of a and b. Okay, so we're going to, to, to do that, we're going to use these uh, two pieces of information. So on the one hand, we know that if we input 0, what should be the output? 6. So uh, using the point 0, 6, we know that f evaluated at 0, well, that would be a multiplied by b to 0, according to that formula. Uh, now, f of 0, that should be 6, and then a, and then what is b to 0? That's 1. So what does that tell us? That a is 6. Uh, therefore, f of x must be 6 multiplied by some b to x. So we don't know b yet, but we did just discover the value of a. So how can we figure out the, val the value of b? Yeah, let's try the other one. So now using, using uh, 3,750, um, well, f of 3 that would be 6 multiplied by b to exponent 3. Uh, on the other hand, f of 3 is supposed to be 750. So we have 750 is 6 multiplied by b to 3. And now how do we solve for b? OK, what is 750 divided by 6? <laughs> we don't know. Okay, 125, that sounds good. 125 <coughs> is b cubed, then what's b? 5, right, because you're right. So, so what is, what, the question is, is what is the cube root of 125? And, and the answer is 5. Uh, whoops. So 5 is b. As a result, we've now figured out what f is. What is the formula for f? That's right. 6 multiplied by 5 to x. Any question about this one? OK. <clears throat> so here's an interesting uh, question. So we've dealt with we've dealt with exponential uh, functions, and we uh, kind of looked at the application of of of, of interest and in money and things like that. Um, so now we're going to deal with uh, solving equations that involve exponentials. So uh, how about this equation? Two to exponent three um, x plus five is equal to um, 16. OK. So the, the problem here, so what, what, I, what, what, what we want to do is solve for x. But the problem 
is that we need to get need to get the x's uh, the x's out of the exponent. And um, an another part of the problem is is that um, the the left hand side is in base two, that is to say is in exponential base two. Uh, whereas the right hand side is in, well, let's look at it. We, I could write this as mm, 2 to 3x plus 5, and then I could say that this is equal to 16 to exponent 1. Because after all, 16 is 16 to 1. So the right hand, r right hand side is in exponential base what? 16. So the base. The base is 16. X pone in shield base 16. So in, in a sense, the, the two sides of the equation are in different bases, and this is, this is the problem. So um, this one is in base, this side is in base 2, this side is in base 16. Is it possible to represent? 16 in base 2, in exponential base 2? Yes. How? Uh, but, but then that would be in base 4, because 2 to 4, right? So, so we could say that this is 2 to 3x plus 5 is 2 to 4. So can you see that now both sides are in exponential base 2? But now that we've accomplished that, because the bases are the same now, what, what else must be the same? The exponents must be the same. Okay, so then now the next equation is 3x plus 5 is 4. And this is something you probably could have solved uh, before this course even started. So let's just do that quick. So 3x is negative 1. So x is negative a third. OK. Any question about it? Is this OK? All right. So that being the case, how about, how about um, 3 uh, to exponent uh, 7x minus 2 is 81. So using more or less the same trick. Okay, so what do I mean by more or less the same trick? Right, so, correct. So the left-hand side is currently expressed in base 3, and the right-hand side in base 81. And they're not the same, and this is, in a sense, the problem. So can you, can you express 81 in base 3? Yes. Yeah. How? 3 to 4. So now the bases are, are the same. As a result, the exponents uh, are the same. So uh, solving, that should be x is 6 over 7. OK, what if I make one slightly more complicated? How about, how about uh, 8 to exponent 3x minus 1 is equal to 32? 
So this is slightly more complicated, but uh, th there's, a, there's a slight, um, what am I trying to say? There's a slight variation on it, but it's the same trick. What do you mean, fraction? <laughs> okay. So we're still having the same problem, right? That this diff the, the two sides are in, not in the same base. So, well, f the, these two, you could represent, like for this one, you could say, well, 81 is 3 to exponent 4. Okay. Can can, can 32 be written as a nice exponent? 8 to something? Not really. Uh, or at least it, it, it may be difficult for you to imagine what, what exponent should it be. Uh, well, so, so that, that same trick is we're having kind of difficulty making it work. But how about this? Can both of these, 8 and 32, be written as in, in the same base? Yeah. What? Two, right? So then how can eight be written? Two to three, and how can 32 be written? Two to five. Okay, so, so doing that, doing that, two to three to three x minus one is equal to two to five. Now we've got to deal with this. So that's just a, a strange way to write eight. So we've got we've got two to three to that. And I need to in order to proceed, you need to remember what if it was what back in the day at the beginning of the semester we did x to m to n. How how do you do this? That you multiply the exponents x to m n. So how can we simplify this one? Yes, so this would be 2, uh, and the exponent would be 9x minus 3 is equal to 2 to 5. Ah, and now we're in the same place that we've been a few times before. Uh, so that 9x minus 3 is 5, so that x is 8 over 9. Any question about this one? Okay. So now, uh, this is all nice and everything, uh, but I've been keeping you in kind of a walled garden. And so now I'm going to open up the, the, the gate and show you the monsters that are outside. So here's this, here's this um, equation. I'm, gonna, I'm going to make a new equation that is quite similar to it, 2 to 3x plus 5. So it's sa same left-hand side. Uh, and I'm going to say that this is equal to, um, how about 17? It doesn't seem a lot different, right? <laughs> I just changed the 16 to a 17. Uh, but this is going to cause a big problem. This is a big, big problem. Uh, in, in the end, uh, you know, all of, all of these problems were nice in the sense that you could somehow say, oh, 81 is 3 to exponent 4. Uh, and on this one, you can say, oh, they're the same base. Uh, also, if you had, you know, if you, were really good at, if you were really good at this, you could write 32 in base 8. How is 32 written with, in exponential base 8? It's 8 to 3 fifths. Right? But the fact that the exponent is a fraction makes it kind of difficult to deal with. Okay, now here, you're, you wouldn't even be able to do that. You wouldn't even be able to reckon the, the exponential as a fraction, as a rational number like 3 fifths. Okay, so, so we need something new is, is the point. So we can't, we, we can't solve this equation with the tools that we have at present. So we need a new tool. Okay. So 
So let's consider the function uh, f of x, or I'll just write y is uh, b to x. And to be, to be a valid base, remember, uh, it has to be the case that b is positive and not 1. Okay, now I'm going to make a drawing, a sketch of the exponential function. So, so this exponential function goes to the point 0, 1. If you plug in 0, x is 0, then the output is 1. And then for, uh, just so I can make a definite drawing, I'll, I'll assume that b is more than 1, uh, so that it's exponential growth. Okay, so I have a question for you. Concerning this function, um, is it injective? Yes. And can you remind me what that means? <laughs> can you remind me what that means? Visually, anyway? Sorry? Got <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so then how do you the to remember, I want you to remember how do you check if something is injective? Ah, the horizontal line test. Oh, okay. So yeah, for every input there's one output. Uh, other way around. For every output there's one input. Okay. Okay, so then d is it injective? It is. Uh, and remember what that means. That, that means that, that as a function, it's invertible. It's invertible. So visually, how do you, how do you if I, if, since, since we have the plot of an exponential function, how do we plot its inverse? Do you remember? Do you remember how we compute inverse functions? How about that? OK, you switch x and y and then solve for, solve for y. Or, or whatever. So, uh, well, that switching x and y, what what effect does that have visually? Yeah, it's a reflection, but across what? Not across the y-axis, not across the x-axis. The what? What do we reflect across? Okay, I'll, t I'll, I'll run with that. Across y is x. So this is y is x. This one is the plot of y is uh, exponential base b of x. And then, and then to, to uh, compute its to compute its inverse, we reflect across that. So this here is the point, that one, is the point uh, 0, 1. Uh, and because that point is on this function, what should be on the inverse function? One zero. 1, 0. So this point should be there. And then remember the way it's supposed to look. It's, look, it's supposed to look symmetric. So like it'll look kind of like a butterfly. When you, when you have it right. So, so that means that this needs to go this way. And then from here, this way. More or less. It's not perfect, but you get, you get the idea. OK. So this is, this is the inverse of the exponential. And inverse of exponential is, is a mouthful, and we're not going to say that every time. What is the name of the inverse of exponential? If you don't know it, you would never in a million years guess. 
It is logarithm. Flashbacks. Okay, so the way it's written, this one is exponential based B, and this one is logarithm based B. So where where equations are concerned, uh, solving equations are concerned, this is how it works. So so suppose that I uh, that we have the equation y is m x, and m that's that's. Uh, m multiplied by x. And suppose we wanted to solve for x. How would you do that? Divide by m, right? So what I want you to see is that to solve for x, this m changes sides. And what it's doing over here, it's multiplying on this side, but when you switch it to the other side, it's got to do the inverse of that. It's got to divide. So now what I'm saying is that in the case of exponentials, if you have y is exponential base b of x, and you want to you want to solve for x, you want to get x out of the exponent, then the base b has to switch sides. It's exponential base b on the right side. When it switches sides, what will it be? So this is this is multiply, and the opposite of multiply is divide. The inverse of multiply is divide. This is exponential, and what's the inverse of exponential? Logarithm. So this will be logarithm base b of y. So it's exponential base b on this side, and it's, when it switches sides, it's logarithm base b. Okay, so as a result, we can now solve that equation on the previous page that gave us so much trouble. Uh, so I'll solve it on a new page. So that equation on the previous page that was giving us so much trouble was 2 to exponent 3x plus 5 is equal to 17. And we want to solve for x. So that is to say, we want to get, we want to get this exponent, th this stuff in the exponent, out of the exponent. We want to get this stuff out. So that means that we're going to get, we're going to make the base 2 change sides. So now this will be 3x plus 5 is equal to what? So it's exponential base 2 on this side. And we, want to, yeah, and we want to move it to the other side. So it's exponential base 2 on this side. What, on the left side, what is it on the right side? Logarithm base 2 of 17. Now, you might say, well, I have no idea what that is. OK, that's fine. But I want you to just just keep in your mind and heart that this is something that we'll talk about after the break. Just, it's some number. How could we solve for x from here? <laughs>